even though we are currently 22 years into the 21st century, we're still talking about range like they did in the 20th century. And that's unfortunate when it comes to electric vehicles like the Ford Lightning and the upcoming crop of bigger and squarer EVs that we're going to see in the next year or two. When we're talking about range, especially EPA window sticker range, you need to understand it is based on 55% city driving, 45% highway driving. That gives us the combined fuel efficiency rating and the combined range figure. So for this Lightning, 70 MPGE combined, 320 miles of EPA combined range. Over here in the Silverado, this is a diesel, pretty similar thing going on, 21 MPG combined, 504 miles of combined EPA range. However, when I talk to people about range in an electric vehicle, they're not talking about driving around the city. It's not a question of how many times can I do loops around downtown New York in my Ford F-150 Lightning? How many times can I drive from the suburbs of Houston into downtown Houston and back again in my Lightning on city roads? Instead, they're talking about can I make it from Austin to Houston. Can I make it from Houston to El Paso, San Francisco to Los Angeles? How long would it take me to drive to New York if I wanted to leave right now? And in that discussion, the combined range figure is absolutely useless on an electric car, but pretty useful, interestingly, on a traditional ICE vehicle. And the reason is most ICE vehicles, this truck included, pretty much everything outside of some hybrids are going to have higher highway fuel efficiency numbers than city numbers. This one, 20 miles per gallon city, 23 highway, 21 combined, EPA, 504 miles of range. But what if you were to drive that just out on the open highway, getting 23 miles per gallon? You'd get 552 miles of range which is part of why people love diesel engines for long distance travel. They get excellent highway fuel economy, and that means they have bladder busting range. What about a Lightning? Well, that's a pretty different story. 320 miles of EPA combined range only yields 283 miles of range if you're driving this out on the highway. And that's because the highway fuel efficiency number is 63 MPGE, not 78 MPGE in the city. What's going on? Well, the Lightning, it's basically shaped like a brick. This is a very square pickup truck, and as the speed increases, the aerodynamic resistance is going to be greater and greater and greater. When you take a look at the EPA testing cycles, the city highway test is pretty darn slow. Even the most recent update to the highway test is not exactly as swift as people drive in Texas. If you are doing that Austin to Houston or Houston to San Antonio or all the way over to El Paso, you're probably going to be going 80, 85 miles an hour. And in those situations, you will get far less than 283 miles of range. This is interestingly part of the reason I have problems with some of the range towing tests that I have seen on YouTube or in printed media as well. Again, 283 miles of highway rated range. So if you see a review that says, oh, I was only able to pull my trailer 200 miles, that was a really significant drop over 320. Well, no, because this isn't rated for 320 on the highway. It's rated for 283. So 200 miles of towing range, it's less than a third reduction. It's not a 50% reduction or as big as some outlets have said. But that's again because the way that we typically think about range in an electric vehicle needs to adjust. And it needs to adjust because of the advent of these less efficient on the highway electric vehicles and the upcoming crop of things like a Kia EV9 or the upcoming Hyundai three row or Volvo three row SUVs that are promising to be bigger and squarer than a lot of the three row vehicles we've seen in the electric space up till this point. Good example would be something like a Tesla Model Y. The Model Y, 330 miles of combined range, so pretty similar to this Lightning, but when you drive it on the open highway, it's pretty aerodynamic. So it does not drop down to 280 miles, it only drops down to 316 miles. That's a very, very small jump. We also see a very similar reduction in the other sleek and efficient EVs out there. A Lucid, the Tesla Model 3, something like a Ford Mustang Mach-E is pretty aerodynamic, the Kia EV6, etc. And that's why some of those vehicles in range testing, say 70 mile an hour range testing or 65 mile an hour range testing, will beat their EPA combined score because city and highway are pretty similar. But in this kind of electric vehicle, that is absolutely not the case. 
Also why in some of those tests, people are impressed with fuel economy in diesel engine vehicles like this. If you're driving that Silverado in stop and go or slow and go traffic, you probably won't be getting 20 MPG. You might get 15, 16 MPG, depending on what you're doing. But out on the open highway, it really is a champ. Bottom line, we're thinking about electric vehicle range wrong, especially when we're talking about less aerodynamic vehicles like this Ford Lightning. If you aren't planning on spending 300 miles in stop and go traffic, the combined number is absolutely useless for most Americans. Here's what you can do. When you're taking a look at a new EV, go over to fueleconomy.gov, that's the EPA's fuel economy website, find your model like this Ford Lightning, you'll pull it up, then you'll hit the customize button, set the amount of time you're spending in stop and go or slow and go traffic to zero, and then you can see what the range figure is out on the open highway according to the EPA numbers. Now understand again that the EPA highway test is not exactly high speed. There is a high speed loop, but it's not really that fast. So take a few miles off of that and you will get a very realistic range for the vast majority of electric vehicles on sale in the US. Some electric vehicles, again, like a Tesla Model Y, they're going to be pretty close to the combined number. But some vehicles like this Ford Lightning could be 40 miles off, which is a pretty significant difference. And that difference is likely going to become more and more important as we start to see more big electric vehicles like the F-150. The Hummer is, of course, on sale. We're going to see a Silverado EV very soon. There's going to be a Ram electric pickup truck at some point. And all the rumors say that Ford is also going to be bringing us some big body on frame SUVs. And if we ever get some full size three quarter ton and one ton electric trucks, then that's going to be even more important. And if you're a fleet customer and you're considering buying something like an e-transit van, then that goes up orders of magnitude because the e-transit is far less aerodynamic than this F-150. In future videos, you'll see me talk about the highway range and the combined range on new EVs for this exact reason. And on the animations on screen, you will also see displayed city, highway, and combined range figures because your range will obviously vary based on the kind of driving you're doing, but it will vary in a different way to more traditional vehicles like this Silverado. That's a very important thing to keep in mind if you're considering an electric vehicle or even a plug-in hybrid vehicle for your next car. A lot of plug-in hybrids suffer this exact same problem, only they have smaller battery packs and it becomes less of a thing because, of course, you have the gasoline engine to fall back on. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section and, of course, stay tuned for the upcoming video that I have set up right here, which is what is the range impact when you have a 9,000-pound trailer connected to an electric truck or a diesel pickup truck right here. Stay tuned for that one. I'll see all of you later.